Don't buy a P-71. Buy this. Town, 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 town car, 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 town, town. Lincoln Town Car Executive L. Before ride-sharing apps, this was the king of the car service. Do you need to get from Manhattan to JFK in a vehicle that won't upset your stomach or wrinkle your shirt? Executive L. Do you need to make an intimidating entrance during a sanitation contract negotiation? Executive L. Do you need to move an ERJ-135 flight crew from JFK to LaGuardia? Send an Executive L. What you're looking at is a factory stretched panther body. You get six more inches of legroom for the rear passengers. And you get wider rear doors. And rear passengers have control over the front passenger seat. That makes this the closest USDM counterpoint to the Toyota Century from Japan. Ford offered the six inch stretch L feature on the town car's high and mid trims, but the executive trim level was only available new to fleet sales. These commercial vehicles came in blue, silver, cherry, cashmere, but most fleet buyers ordered the executive L in Ford Black clear coat, or what most of us call limo black. In these uncertain times, all we know for sure is that times are uncertain. That's why we're offering you zero money down and 0% APR for the first 300 months. Because we want you to know we value all the things that you value. America. Community. Words. These mountains are some bullshit. Dogs. Toilet paper stock footage. We are here for you, both corporately and whatever the opposite of corporate is. Sponsored by Kunkelman Chevrolet and Nissan. Dominic bought this executive L from a limousine company that was going out of business for 1,800 bucks. 1,800 bucks gets you an okay street parked Corolla or a trashed P-71 Interceptor with peeling clear coat and a depressing smell. Or you could have this and give your friends the experience, give them the feeling of expense account luxury. You can pretend to work at the 4Gs and the partners are sending you to Cincinnati to settle an estate belonging to Harriet Sloanbaum, the nitrogen and manure queen of Western Ohio and Kentucky. Or you could pretend to own three restaurants in Weehawken and two in nearby Heights. They serve really doughy pizza and the cheese doesn't stay on it. And they don't accept credit cards, but they have an ATM in the restaurant that says ATM. The joints are never busy, but they've been open for 25 years now. Everybody knows why, but no one says anything. The Executive L features the long-lived 4.6 liter Ford V8 Modular making 239 horsepower and 287 pound-feet of torque. With the 4R75 four-speed automatic transmission and fuel economy of around 17 city and 23 highway, there's no reason to mod this car at all. On the principle that the more stock a car is, the more dependable it is. But that doesn't mean that Dominic isn't looking to make a few adjustments in the near future, like maybe a dual exhaust, maybe different wheels, or maybe even the J-Mod transmission modification for improved function. Might also get a flash to disengage the top speed limiter, since the limiter for an Executive L is supposedly set at only 110 miles an hour. I have a pimple in the crack of my butt, and I'm trying to pop it while I read this narrative. I will never lie to you. Of course, this car is perfect for absent-mindedly reading the newspaper in the back seat, because it's the best way to guarantee the driver won't talk to you. It's a car that's usually been aimed at senior citizens, like every cop show on CBS. The types who want to take a Sunday drive and listen to Duke of Earl in peace without having to give up any road space to cyclists. But the appeal of an executive L for the too young for colonoscopies but too old for putting up with friends you don't actually like demographic is that it's bigger, longer, and has majority shareholder polish to it. Like Bruce Wayne's Pastrami Tsunami. It's the automotive equivalent of Just for Men, Touch of Grey, 
I'm young enough to sleep with a clinger, but experienced enough to bring my own condom. Dominic uses this car for ride sharing when he's on the road with his band, since he can hitch a trailer to this. And you can sleep comfortably in it, by his own admission. When he bought this car from the limo company, you know, the asking price was $1,800, and Dom said, I'm not going to even negotiate with you. And the guy selling it said, that's right. And he was like, oh, well, here's your money. An Executive L isn't fast like a 7 Series or S Class. The two-valve Ford Modular will work hard to accelerate with a full load and a full trunk, and you will get up to speed. I mean, it's not like it's crazy underpowered like those V8s from the 70s when they were going through the smog years. You're, you're fine. Oh, in the rear armrest next to the HVAC and volume controls is a dispenser made to fit a grandma purse sized package of tissues. There's no red line on the tachometer because the four-speed overdrive TCU and, well, the engine's ECU won't let you over-rev. It'll just keep kicking it up to a higher gear until you, until you hit that supposed speed limiter. Ford gave you a double-din head unit with both CD and tape cassette and Dolby noise reduction. But see this little button marked mute with a telephone icon? It doesn't answer your phone. This head unit doesn't have Bluetooth or a USB interface. All this button does is mute all audio so your biggest dickest passenger can take a call on their iPhone 1, which came out the same year as this car. You, as the good chauffeur, have to know that your passenger has to touch base, which means you're going to mute paper planes by MIA. Take me back home to suburbia so I can eat ground beef out of a pan. An executive L will teach you to drive politely. Because you know that your passengers are comfortable and you're going to want to keep them that way. Easy gas, easy brakes, planned turns, and smooth merges. So I took this beast on curvy back roads. It was terrible! It rocked, pitched, and it was hard to mine the center line. But if you want a cheap panther body, get an Executive L over the P71. Don't get a P71 interceptor unless you want to be called a snitch behind your back. Oh yeah, another funny thing. See this floor mat in the back, you know, in the back passenger area? That was an option, a $360 option, which seems absurd, but I could see the argument for wanting to clean one piece of material rather than two. Seems like a lateral move though. An executive L isn't supposed to be where the good times happen. It's just the means to get there. It's the ultimate take me to the airport car. Hell, the previous owner claims to have driven Neil Young around. In 2020, as we bid farewell to most of the old big sedans, the executive L's will still be out there, now changing hands between private owners and reminding us of the, the leaving model of corporate efficiency. But all this car really tells me is you've just finished the first season of Succession and you want to seem rich while you blast the theme song from Succession. 2007 Lincoln Town Car Executive L. The official car of booger sugar breathing exercises off a pair of middle management butt cheeks. You can practically hear the corporate jargon in the exhaust notes. The data never lies. Let's take this offline. Put a pin in it. Going forward like we... Teamwork makes the dream work. My door is always open. Yet the Lincoln Town Car, Executive L, attempts to do what corporations often can't, to seem accessible while being accessible. It's not going to get the performance crowd all wild up, but that's not what this car is for. In its day, it was a fleet car, a luxury merchant mover before its retirement in 2011. But today it's closer to the type of utilitarian daily driver that tells people you care about appearances, but not in a way that consumes your entire existence. A Lincoln Town Car suggests a life outside of itself. Town Car This is a song for a town car I ran out of words So I'm making them up for a town car Town Car, Town Car